Hi Izzy. Hi Allie. So we're going to be doing the book review this time on the book In His Depths by Charles M. Sheldon. And it's pretty much of a classic. Um, it was written in the 1900s and so it's written at an earlier time politically as you, as you read the book and you know it's a time of prohibition and different things going on. And um, in the midst of all this, the storyline is a, a church where the pastor and the church um, stand up and decide to do what Jesus, to follow Jesus' steps, to do what Jesus would do. Have you ever heard the saying, what would Jesus do? And the bracelets we used to, we made and everything actually comes from this book in his steps. And so uh, I think it's, uh, would be really important. I thought each one of you could take, um, you know, basically Ellie could take the women in the book and kind of write a little bit on them. And um, of course, Izzy could take the men in the book. And well, what, what, what the whole storyline is, is how, um, how Jesus affects us in our walk with God. And if we would do everything just the way Jesus would do, we would find our lives in uh, different circumstances. And this actually would end up spreading to other people and maybe even up to other communities. And that's what it did in this book. So let's start with um, chapter one. The first scripture says, For here unto ye called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. And that's in 1 Peter 2.21. And so that's the, that is actually um, the, what the book is all about, is that we are called to God to walk in his steps. Um, so, well, the storyline starts with, um, with Reverend Henry Maxwell, and he, and he is um, of the First Church of Raymond, and the, the town of Raymond. And he's in a really well-to-do um, church, and he's getting ready for his um, Sunday service in chapter one. And he uh, has a knock at the door, and a man comes, and the man looks like a tramp looks like maybe a homeless person or something. Needless to say, he is homeless. And he comes and he's out of a job and he just asks the pastor if anything he could do around the church um, to make some money because he's having a really hard time now. And the pastor basically says, I don't have anything for you to do, I'm very sorry. And he kind of closes the door and says goodbye. And then he kind of looks and says something, says a couple nice things and says, well, I'm sorry, you know, um, maybe if you come back another time or something. You know, he's, he's actually cordial to him, uh, but he doesn't help him. And so um, as for the church, the church service goes on the next day. Well, in the meantime, of course, um, this, this man, this homeless guy, walks around try, trying to find um, work and he runs into some of the other members of the church and basically nobody gives him work or nobody really cares about him. And so then that day passes and um, Sunday morning, you see a beautiful um, young lady named Rachel Winslow and she's gonna become, become one of the, the um, star um, characters in the book. And she is singing with the choir and she has this beautiful, beautiful worship voice and she's singing all of Jesus and everyone is just astounded by her singing. And so in the midst of all this, the pastor stands up starts to give them the, the sermon and a sound of a man's voice comes in and interrupts and out of the shadows comes this man, uh, the same man that had come to the door. And he basically says, you know, I, I um, will probably die in a few days. He had um, tuberculosis or something. Um, and in a low tone, he said, um, basically, uh, he's talking about, you know, how he just needed some help and that he was out of a job, his last job, he was a printer and, a, and basically the lineal type took over his job, this machine took over his job and they let him go. His wife died and, and he had a daughter that he, he left um, um, with um, neighbors and he was trying to find some work so he could go back. In the meantime, you know, he was, he was sickly, he was becoming sick and starving. And so he goes on and says, you know, obedience, faith, love, you know, imitating. What do Christians mean by following the steps of Jesus? You know, when the pastor gave in his steps, 
You say, what does that mean to follow the steps of Jesus? You know, I've had no help, no sympathy. Um, the minister, I went to the door with the minister. He basically um, said he had nothing for me either, even though he was kindly. He was probably the only one that was kind to me. And uh, But uh, what do you mean when you're singing about Jesus? Um, what do you mean? What does being a Christian mean? And he goes on. And in the midst, midst of all this, his voice kind of gets softer and softer, and he falls over, right over on the communion table and in the aisle. And everybody's like, oh, oh, and taking him. The minister comes and helps him and actually takes him home with him. And he is he's a very sick man. That's chapter one. So we have in the midst, the whole congregation is shocked by this man's story as he's coming in. And they're, and they're very um, upset with themselves or at least some of them are, and, and how they, they handled this um, man needing help and um, how they could ignore, you know, um, ignore people that really were in need. And so chapter two goes on with Henry Mac Maxwell, and um, he's, he took the man into his spare room, and for three days he's um, trying to help this man, and then on the third day he actually turned and he died. And so Maxwell um, and his wife, they want to take care of his little girl. They want to help in this. They they feel very remorse, remorse that they hadn't helped him before. And so the Sunday preaching came that night, um, the next Sunday, I should say. Um, Henry Maxwell, um, the pastor, he's um, thinking about all of this and thinking, you know, um, we as a church, you know, we don't reach, we haven't been reached out. We're we very, very into ourselves. And he's thinking as for himself and what kind of message he should preach. And he gets on his knees and he asks the Lord and prays. And in the midst, in the midst of all his prayer and everything, the Lord shows up and he takes the same, the same scripture in his steps. And he thought we should make a pledge. We should make a pledge to live as Jesus would live. So in the congregation, there's a few characters that you're going to get to know. And one of them was Edward Norman, and he's the editor of a, a newspaper called The Daily News for 10 years. And then on to Alexander Powers, and he is uh, the railroad, he works for the railroad, he's superintendent for the railroad there. Donald Marsh is the president of a college, Lincoln College. Um, Milton Wright is a merchant, um, a businessman in Raymond. Dr. West is a doctor, and then we have this young Jasper Chase, who's the author of a novel that he wrote about this girl, you know, actually his girlfriend, who is um, Rachel Winslow, which is a star um, uh, character in the book. And she is the singer, the worship leader. And on to um, Miss Virginia Page. Miss Virginia Page and her um, brother, they um, had lost their parents in the accident, and now they have inherited a lots of lots of money. And their grandmother is actually living with them, um, and they are um, basically taking taking um, taking over, you know, the estate now. Wondering, you know, how they should live in the midst. So you have some star players that are in this church. A few other ones too. And so Henry Maxwell gets up and he. Um, uh, offers a pledge to volunteers that would like to pe pledge what would Jesus do for an entire year and they'd have to sign a pledge can you imagine that if you were going to sign a pledge what would Jesus do for that year so um, they decide he decided he preaches the message and says um, basically how um, what would Jesus do have done in the, everyone's thinking now in the sense of this homeless guy what would they have what should they have done and what would Jesus do if their lives were different? They really were leaving, living for Jesus. And so he offers this and says, if you'd like to pledge your life for one year, and what would Jesus do? Come, you know, to the back room here, and we're going to have a meeting and pray. What would Jesus do? Well, the congregation is full, you know, a few hundred people, um, but 50 people actually decide to come back. But some of the star the, the star players that came back are the ones that I, I mentioned. And so, you know, um, so he says, he said, last Sunday it left me dissatisfied with my previous definition of Christian discipleship. And now, um, led by truth, 
um, that we can be guided in all of the truth in our lives and be honest with ourselves. So then we go on to chapter three. In chapter three, he says, um, basically the scripture is to walk even as he walked. Who walked? As Jesus walked. And we're talking now about one of the men that signed the pledge. What would Jesus do? 